So I'm Brad Nielsen and I'm the owner of Nielsen Mechanical. Uh, Nielsen Mechanical is um, primarily a truck shop, um, semis, semi-trailers, and um, we do maybe a little bit of automotive, um, but uh, primarily it's the big stuff and construction equipment. Um, we have a service truck that goes out on the road and, and um, we'll work on guys that break down on the side of the road and also for some local construction companies and stuff we'll go out and, and work on their equipment. And I also sell the steel line chainsaws and, and trimmers and stuff like that. Uh, so we started in 2006 in Calgary and I was there for two years working for uh, one construction company, Con Construction. And then we moved out here in 2008 and I was on an acreage uh, until 2013. We built this shop and moved into town. Yes, I grew up in Acadia Valley in this area on a farm 15 miles from town and uh, went to Olds College after high school and from there into Calgary, started my apprenticeship and finished my apprenticeship at Finning in Calgary. I went to Olds College for two years. Uh, it was called a pre-apprentice major at the time, so instead of uh, a lot of apprenticeships, you, you get your hours, then you go to school for nine weeks, and then you get, come back to work, get more hours, go to school for nine weeks, and it's a four-year apprenticeship. At Olds College, I did all my schooling at once. So then I would just get my hours, write my test, get my hours, write my test. Um, just a different way to do it. And so uh, I don't know if it was the right way to do it, but by the time I was writing my fourth test, I hadn't been in school for three years. So you forget the details of a lot of things, you know. So, um, but I made it through and, and that's what I took at Olds. I like it because it's, you know your customers, I have a great customer base. It's not always a new person walking in the door, you know, so um, I would not want to be anywhere else. Well, I kind of just fell into it. Um, I was working at Finning as a, as a um, field mechanic for Con Construction. And uh, Craig Con, Sir Con, came up to me one day and said, hey, I'll pay you this amount of dollars if you buy your own truck. So. Bought my own truck, quit finning, and here we are. So <laughs> it was, uh, I didn't think about it for a, a long time, but um, talked to Leslie about it, and we decided, yeah, we want to, I always wanted to be my own boss, I guess. So it worked out pretty good. Well, I think um, just growing up, you know, I grew up on a farm, and I've and, uh, been basically playing with mechanics, mechanical stuff my whole life. I remember my dad going over to Vanskill's and getting old motors and plopping them on the floor of the shop and I'd just, you know, start ripping them apart when, when I was probably, I don't know, eight or nine. Uh, I don't know if I actually put anything back together, but um, eventually I did. And uh, working at Finning as a field mechanic, you know, you're on your own a lot. Um, there'd be, I'd, There'd be weeks at a time where I'd never even be at Finning. I was just in the field with customers and on the front lines and stuff. So uh, you get used to, I guess, making decisions on the fly and dealing with people and stuff. So um, I had no formal training, that's for sure. Uh, staying consistently busy, I suppose. Um, it seems like it's either feast or famine. You know, my yard is chuck full of stuff to work on and I need 10 more guys and then you get all that done and then, you know, we're sweeping floors kind of thing. Uh, the last couple of years, it seems like it's kind of evened out. It's a little more consistent. So that's been good. But it's always, that's probably the biggest challenge. And finding employees. Uh, just not a lot of people want to move out to the middle of nowhere to, <laughs> to be a mechanic. So, you know, I guess the most satisfying thing about running this business is when uh, I guess is making the customer happy you know like they bring something in that's not working right or, or you know uh, have issues that they can't figure out with a vehicle or a truck and we fix them up and you know they call up and say you know how happy they are that it's working right and stuff like that it's I guess that's 
I mean, that's what we enjoy doing is fixing the stuff. So when you get it right, it's nice. <laughs> it's satisfying. I've always wanted to be my own boss. Um, and I think it was just from growing up on the farm with dad and seeing my dad and my uncle, you know, working together and not working for somebody else. And that's what I always wanted to do. Well, the reason we wanted to move back to the area, uh, my wife and I were living in Airdrie and we didn't have any kids, but I didn't want to raise my kids in the city. Um, and not that it's, I mean, of course you can raise great kids in the city and, and in some ways it's nice because there's more amenities, there's more, more programs for your kids and stuff. But I just wanted to be in the small community when we raise our kids. I mean, we have great teachers in this school and, um, and I wanted my kids to have the, the rural upbringing, I guess. And um, so that's why we moved back, uh, mainly to raise the kids. And I was tired of the city. I was tired of Deerfoot Trail every day. It was, I was starting to get some pretty serious road rage. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm definitely a small town guy. Yeah. Uh, for the better, I think. Um, it allows us a little more flexibility um, just so we can, you know, if we want to take a, a long weekend to go camping or something, if I can get things organized right around here, then I can take off and, and uh, we can do that. Well, in a way, yes and no. I mean, because when I'm gone, I have to have the doors open because I have employees and stuff and more customers now. When I, when I was just on my own, when I first came out, I would just be closed because I didn't have very many customers and stuff. So I would tell my few customers that I had, yeah, I'm going to be gone. And, and then we'd go. So um, I was on an acreage then. I didn't have a storefront and stuff. So it was a totally different ball game then. But. Don't stress over the little things, I think. When I first started, um, I would lose a lot more sleep than I do now. And maybe I just have thicker skin or something, but definitely it was, it seemed more stressful at the beginning, I guess. Top three things to be a successful entrepreneur. Well, communication is huge. Um, being able to talk with your customers uh, and being able to you know, admit when you screw up because we do screw up. And um, so I think, you know, communication and I guess honesty too. I, I pride myself in the fact that, you know, if I do, um, if I do screw up on a job or something, I, and there's lots of times when you can hide it and the customer would never know. Um, but I always make sure I'm upfront with the customer and, and you know, do the warranty work where it's required and stuff like that. So, and organization, um, you know, uh, if you don't know how to do books, which I really don't hire a book, a good bookkeeper, which I have. So that's, that's key for sure. Well, I think a lot of things that hold people back are is fear. Um, feeling that, you know, they don't have the required skills or education. Um, you know, I have no business degree. I have no education on uh, how to run a business or anything. I just kind of did it and figured it out as I went. And that probably wouldn't work for everyone and it wouldn't work for every business, but it did work for me. So, yeah, I mean, if someone wanted to do it, I would say just jump in and see how it goes. And it might not work, but what's the worst that's going to happen, you know? To continue to thrive, you need to have good employees and, um, and the economy. I mean, uh, we are not completely dependent on economy because we do work, you know, farmers are still going to plant their field, fields every year and stuff. But um, it does make a difference on, you know, how the oil patch is doing and stuff like that. So people have to keep breaking stuff. And if stuff isn't moving down the road, then it's not going to break down. So, uh, well, I mean, I guess the capabilities of the shop. Um, I mean, we do have a lot of tooling back there that, you know, I have jacks. I can lift a semi right up in there and, and you know, walk underneath it, work underneath the thing. So... Some of that stuff um, 
it's just, you know, it really makes our job more efficient, you know, the jobs that we do more efficient with the tooling that we have.